What's up guys? Today we're taking a look at the Shining Gundam from G Gundam or G Fighter Mobile G Fighter. Honestly, I'm really surprised that I haven't covered this kit yet because the Shining Gundam is the Gundam that started all for me when I was in grade school catching what I could of this show's reruns on Adult Swim. The Shining Gundam really became ingrained in my impressionable little mind as what the epitome of an over-the-top like good guy hero should be looks like we're getting a lot of cool effect parts and even a little nod to the theme song with the g gundam being engraved in his beam saber i'm hyped let's open her up Built by Neo Japan for the 13th Gundam Fight Tournament and making its debut in the mobile fighter G Gundam anime, the high-grade Shining Gundam was piloted by Domon Kashu and occasionally by Rain Mikamura. Domon Kashu, the protagonist of the show, is a martial arts champion, and with this in mind, the Shining Gundam was optimized for mobility and close quarters combat, despite having a few mixed armaments in its disposal. I mean, what's a Gundam without beam Vulcan Earth? Out Vulcans in its head, am I right? Equipped with a system that allowed for the Gundam to read its passengers' emotions and augment its own strength, the Shining Gundam was able to increase its output in stages, in good shonen battle anime fashion, of course. The first of these was the battle mode, which allowed for the use of its iconic finishing move, Shining Finger, in which the gauntlets on the arms opened up and extra ventilation panels open up on the suit. This transformation increases the speed and attack power of the Shining Gundam, but does lower its defensive capabilities. Next up is the Super Mode, which opens up the rest of those Shining Gundam's concealed boosters and ventilation panels, and increases the Shining Gundam's power by another 50%. This mode is controlled by the emotional energy of the form and can only be triggered by Domon during passionate and rage-filled moments. However, once he learned how to attain a true warrior's serene state of mind from Schwar's Bruder, he was able to achieve this super mode at will. And finally, there is the true super mode, or hyper mode as it would later be known, where the entire Shining Gundam turns glistening gold and the Shining Gundam's output is pushed to the absolute maximum. This mode also allows for Domon to use the Shining Finger Sword where he inputs all of the Shining Gundam's power into the Beam Saber, increasing its size and strength, and also changing the beam to a green color instead of the normal pink. Now, a fun little detail about this Beam Saber is that on one side of the hilt, it says G Gundam, just like it does when the Beam Saber is activated in the anime's opening sequence, which I love. And also in a nod to the original Mobile Suit Gundam, the Shining Gundam is equipped with a Corlander, a small craft capable of flying the pilot to the awaiting Gundam and docking it where it will be acting as a backpack vernier thruster while docked. Interesting enough, this high-grade Shining Gundam was released in 2011 and is actually the most recent iteration of the Mobile Suit in Gunpla form. Hopefully that means that we'll get a revive down the road, maybe one that doesn't use polycaps. This kit has some pretty good gates overall. There's some pretty nasty gates on the shoulders, but they're white, so they won't show stress marks. And another note is that he wears his beam sabers like the samurai on both sides. Alrighty, so it's articulation time, and... Uh, so, I love what they were going for with this guy. I really do. The high-grade Shining Condom is cool, and I don't hate him. But he's really not my favorite. And this isn't even me just like being bleh because of the God Gundam's recent release. There are definitely older kits that are sturdier than this one. He came out in like, two, this guy came out in like 2011. So it, it, yeah, there aren't good ways for these to like hang on for the side verniers. 
you're supposed to just kind of precariously perch this part on top to denote that it's open and they just kind of, yeah. We do get two heads for the regular mode and the hyper mode, and that's really cool. And I like that the shoulders just kind of swivel open and they've got those gold foil seals on the inside. So that's nice too. Move pretty well. The legs just, they pop out easy too. I think that like maybe once you have him like in the pose you want, that it'll be fine. But just getting there might irritate you because he falls apart. A lot of the skirting is like really loose and like popped off, the legs are loose. So that's, that's the main thing is just that when you're moving him, he falls apart. But once, you know, once you have him where you want him, he's sturdy. Now they were very ambitious with the effect parts. I love this beam sword. He's got his shining finger hands. Those are really cool. The beam sabers are great. We got lots of different like hands. We have regular closed fists. We've got the gripping sandwich hands. And we even have extra skirting in case you don't wanna have his beam katanas on his left hip. And I even love this big shining finger like blast hand. It's really cool. The problem is that there's this giant plastic piece in the center that makes it so the hand doesn't fit. And the instructions in the book are very unclear as to how to put this on. And I was gonna have a little turntable segment with it, but I just could not make it fit. Didn't wanna glue it. It's still a cool piece. You could probably use it for something, just not for its designated purpose. I think if you gave this guy a little time and a little love, especially with some color corrections, like you could have these hyper mode veneers. And some of y'all are pretty, oh, there goes the leg again. Lieutenant Dan here, just, okay, so we'll put him here. Don't lose your head about it, fella. Boo. Not, not my favorite high grade kit. I would say that if you are a connoisseur of all things G Gundam, and you have to have it. It's not a bad kit. It just has, it has its own difficulties just like any other kit. He just has a few more than, than others might. But if you're willing to wait, the real grade God Gundam, which I reviewed a few videos ago, you can find on my channel, is the epitome of what good Gunpla should be. So if you want your G Gundam fix, just wait and get that. You can skip this guy altogether. And if you want to look at a slew of the finest Gunpla available for purchase, go on over to LeapingPandaHobbies.com. LeapingPandaHobbies.com, where you can get yourself 10% off with my promo code EGGHEAD. That's right, I'm bald. I'm giving you a discount. LeapingPandaHobbies.com. 10% off promo code EGGHEAD. They've got the best shipping, best customer service and best prices. Don't like Gunpla? Cool. They got Zoids. Oh goodness. They've got tanks. They've got Warhammer. Whatever your little heart desires for that nerd inside of you, you can get it at leavingpandahobbies.com. If you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. Sorry I'm, I'm not usually so grumpy about the kits, I promise. I try not to go in and be a sourpuss about any kit. But I also don't want to just like lie to you guys and be like, oh no, this thing, this thing's aw This thing's awesome. Um, and if you guys have been watching for a while, just know I appreciate you. I love building Gunpla, but I love talking to you guys just as much. What are you working on right now? I'd love to know. And as always... My backlog only continues to grow, so I will see you later this week with another review.